Oh, hey, it's Tuesday. You know what that means? Time for a story. Now, <clears throat> I was at camp last summer with the kids, and Goober and Scooter were there, and they were talking to the kids a lot about seeking wise counsel. Well, it got me to think about a story that I was involved in a while back. Now, men, if you're married, you might be able to relate to this. Now, my wife, Tammy, and she had been glaring out the windshield with an icy stare. She said, just stop and ask directions with that look on her face. Well, I knew she meant business. See, Mike Bartlett had invited me out to do some pheasant hunting on he and Rhonda's farm ground. I'd never been to the farm, but since it consisted of about a million acres, I couldn't imagine how I could have any trouble finding it. I figured I could just drive south from my house, and I had to bump into a million acre farm sooner or later. Now, my dog Clem was in the back seat. Well, he had started to whine. I told him to go to the bathroom before we started, but you know how dogs are, they never listen. Just stop and ask directions, said the wifey again. Uh, we've been driving for hours. Now, see, back in the olden days, when we were both younger, and her knees were in a little better shape, I used to have Tammy go into the brush and flush pheasants. She wasn't very good at it, though. I think maybe the loud cursing scared the pheasants, and they'd run off without giving me a shot. Now, eventually, I replaced Tammy in the field with my dog, Clem. I won't go into his make and model, but he can accelerate from zero to 60 in about 10 seconds in pursuit of the nearest songbird. Well, they aren't bad eating, but they're small and kind of bony. Well, now Tammy just sits in the car and reads a book while I hunt. Uh, Clem isn't as good at retrieving, but he doesn't make snide remarks either if I happen to miss a shot. Stop and ask directions, Tammy demanded. We are more than halfway to North Vernon. Oh, all right. I'll stop at the next farm. I don't know what it is about wives or maybe women in general. They're always saying, stop and ask directions. They don't know anything about the people who give directions. Men know, because men give directions themselves. That's one of the reasons men don't like to stop and ask for directions. Now this next farmhouse had about 30 vehicles parked out front. It looked like either a wedding or a funeral. Well, as it turned out, the latter was a closer guess. Now, according to the woman who answered the door, the farmer who lived there, old Isaac Buford, he was on his deathbed. The woman, I assumed, was Isaac's housekeeper, and she told me that Mr. Buford is breathing his last. She told me all his relatives are gathered in the bedroom, sobbing and moaning and assessing the furnishings. I'm sorry to hear that, I said. I'll try the next place. Oh, please don't do that, she said. Mr. Buford would be furious with me if I turned away a gentleman requesting directions. Now she disappeared into the house, presumably toward Mr. Buford's bedroom. Now, presently, I heard a great deal of shouting. Then came a bull-like roar, and the place fell silent. I thought maybe I should make a run for the car. Just then, a large man in a nightgown came down the hallway toward me. He opened the screen door, and then he held out his hand. Hello, he said. I understand you need directions. Buford's my name. I said, I'm sorry to take you away from whatever you were doing, Mr. Buford. Oh, don't worry about that. I was getting mighty bored with all. Then, Elsie, that's my housekeeper, he said, 
told me there was a man at the door who needed directions right away. Of course, all my sons-in-laws jumped up and volunteered, <laughs> but they're all idiots. I decided I'd best get out there and give you the directions myself. You're the first person in several years to stop and ask directions. And I simply couldn't pass up the opportunity to tell the truth. To tell the truth, he said, I'm suddenly invigorated. If you have time, I'll kill a steer and we'll have a barbecue. Sorry, I said, I'm in a bit of a rush. I understood his sense of invigoration, though, because I give pretty good directions myself. You know, even if I don't know the place the person is headed, I sure don't let that stop me for a minute. It would be rude for me to do otherwise. I'm headed to the Bartlett's farm, I said, to do a little pheasant hunting. I'm sure I could find it if I just drove around a bit more. But my wife insisted I ask for directions. I'm sure you know how that goes, Mr. Buford. He said, I certainly do. If I was looking for the Pacific Ocean, my wife, old what's her name, would insist I ask for directions. It's just the nature of women. He closed his eyes for a moment as if to concentrate on the shortest route to Bartlett's farm. Okay, he said after a bit, what you do is you head west on down the highway for two looks. Then you'll see a white farmhouse with a grain silo out back. Two looks, I said. Don't you know about two looks? No, sir. This is the first time I've ever heard the expression, Mr. Buford. Obviously, he was obviously pleased with my show of ignorance. Well, you get back in your car, turn to the west on the highway, you got to pick out some objects as far away as you can see, a tree or a rock or something that won't be moving around. So you pick a horse or a cow, you might never catch up with it. Then you drive to the object. That's one look. You pick out another object as far away as you can see, and that's two looks. You got it? I said, so the white farmhouse with the silo is Bartlett's. He said, nope, that's Jason Riley's place. Right across from his house is Rosebud Road. Turn on it, drive over to Dro Dover Road, and turn right on Dover. You stay on it about three looks, then you turn right off of Dover and drive for one look for until you come to Boulder Road. You take a left, and two looks down that road, you'll come to a large brick house. And then I said, that's Bartlett's place. No, that's Eric's place. He's a fishing buddy of Bartlett's, and he'll be able to give you directions right to his farm. Then I thanked Mr. Buford, and he said, no problem. Happy to be of service. Then he shouted over his shoulder, Elsie, round me up some clothes and boots. I think I'll go plow a field. When I got back to the car, Tammy asked, So, did you get directions to the Bartlett farm? Yes, I did. Tammy smiled and said, Aren't you glad I insisted you stop and ask for directions? I certainly am, I said. Well, I figure if I drive south a bit more, I couldn't help but run into a million acre farm. Well, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Here at the port, God love you and so do we. God bless y'all.